Well hello Internet and welcome to part 5 of my Django video tutorial. In this part of the tutorial we're going to cover style sheets, admin pages, settings, models, and a whole bunch more. And just like always all the code and a transcript of the video is available in the description underneath the video and I have a lot to do so let's get into it. Okay so pardon my voice I have a bit of a cold but I'm going to work through this don't want to hold off too long in making a new tutorial. Now basically aside from HTML that is defined in your templates you're also going to need images, JavaScript, CSS for generating your web pages. And we're going to be storing those in our static directory which we're going to have to create. So what you're going to want to do is make sure you're in your polls directory and then you're going to create another directory called static. And then inside of that you're going to create another directory called polls. And then you can see we'll have a directory here for images as well as we will have our style sheets stored inside of this polls directory inside of the static directory. So now what we're going to do is we are going to start styling our code in the style.css file that we have created right here. Alright, so you can see on the right side of the screen here is our list, and I'm just going to do some very, very simple style sheet type things here. So I'm going to target our links in our list, and I am going to change the color of them. So just color and green, and that's it. And I'm going to save that, and now what I'm going to do is jump back over into index.html and add my style sheet by pointing to that static directory. And how we do that is we start off by a curly bracket, percent sign, load static. That's going to load our static directory. And then we just link to the code. So we'll say link relative is going to be, this is a style sheet obviously. Type is going to be text CSS. And then we need to reference our file. And how we do that is by referencing static and then specifically the file that we want out of the static directory. And then close that guy off, and then close off my tag. And just with those couple changes, reload, and you can see that now the color is green instead of the standard blue. Okay, simple stuff. Now what we all also want to do is you're going to want to go into polls and go new and then directory and you're going to want to create a directory called images. And then inside of this I have a repeating background ping file. And if I open this up you'll be able to see it. So static, polls, and images, and then here it is. It's just a bunch of little tiny squares, nothing that's that big of a deal. Just go on any website and get a repeating background and throw it inside of there. So to use it, I'm going to go into style.css and I'm going to go body, background, and I'm going to say use white if you can't find it. And inside of this, I'll just point at images and background, ping file, and save that and reload this. And now you can see there is our background image. It's a bunch of little tiny squares. Okay, so that's just a way to import images. And now I'm going to jump over into my admin page, which is in polls forward slash admin dot py, to show you some ways you can customize that. So there is the current admin page, and I can come in here and go admin, and there that is all loaded up there on our screen, and you can see how everything is all set up. You can also see that I targeted the question part of the admin page, so let's come in here and look at this. And I basically just said that I want the question to be loaded in on our screen right there. And specifically, if you click on the question that is going to show first our question as well as the publication date and all that other information. Now, if I want to change it so that the publication date shows up before the question, what I'm going to have to do is come down here and put in question admin like that. And if I reload it, you're now going to see the publication date shows up and then the question. I can obviously make a whole bunch of other different changes. Let's say that I want to break up the data into blocks on my page. I could change this from fields into field sets. Let's break this up more. Start this off with none and then I'm going to put in fields followed by my question text because I think it makes a little bit more sense to have that there first. And then I could have date information and fields and here I put my publication date and reload it and you can see where data information shows up there to break up the information you have inside of your admin page. Likewise I could also set it up so that the uh, data information would collapse and to do that I would just come in here and type in classes followed by collapse. Save that, reload it and there you can see if I click on show it shows it, hide it, it hides it obviously. There you go. 
And it also makes a lot of sense for the choices for each question to be on the page. So we're going to add those in as well. And to do that, we're going to create a new class up here. I'm going to call this choice inline. And I'll show you two different ways to show this information on the screen. First, we'll go stacked inline. Here, we're going to define the model we want tied to this. Obviously, it's going to be choice. And then we can also define how many empty spaces show up under the number of choices that are currently being displayed. And I think it makes sense to just show one. You can obviously show more. And we're also going to have to import our model here. So I'm going to import question as well as choice. And now what we can do is come in here and show this the choice information directly inside of the question admin page. Do that by saying inlines is equal to choice inline and reload it. And now you can see the date information as well as all the different choices as well as a blank one for you to enter in a new choice. So you can just say purple and then click save. And if you click on what's your favorite color, purple's going to show up in there as well as a new block that's going to allow you to add in an additional choice. I'll also show you another way. This is stacked in line. We can do it in a little bit neater way. And to do that, we can call we call tabular in line instead. Reload it. And there you can see it's a lot neater so that it doesn't take up a lot of the page. And previously, we had admin site dot register and then choice inside of it. Of course, if you don't want choice to be an option inside of the admin section, just get rid of that altogether and it won't be an option. We could also come up here and change the question list page to display the date published and whether it was recent or not. To do that, we go list display is equal to question text, publication date, and then was published recently. And now you can see was published recently shows up right there. And now I'll jump over into the models section and show you some different ways that we can edit this so it looks a little bit prettier on our screen. So here's models py, and I'm just going to come down here right after we have the return statement for that function. Now let's say that you would like to sort this information you have here on your screen based off of the publication date. You can do so. Just go was and then you go admin order field and then just define how you want it to be sorted and there it is all done. Another option is since we're using booleans here we could use a prettier icon that's built into Django. Use was published recently once again and follow that up with boolean and true and we can go and save that and reload it. You're going to see how those all loaded up right there. We could also go in here and change the description at the top of the table. So let's say you don't like was published recently. Well, we can just come in here and go was published recently and then go short description published recently. And there you can see how that changed. And now we'll jump back over into the admin part of the site and make a couple other changes here. Let's say that you would like to add a filter box into your admin section that's going to allow the users to sort by the publication date. It is extremely easy. You're just going to come inside of here, make sure you're still in the question admin class. And here you go, list filter is equal to pub date. Reload it. And there you can see it showed up. So it's so, many, so easy to add a whole bunch of different functionalities here. You could also add search capabilities. So we could say search fields equal to and if you want to allow them to search by the questions, there you go. Reload. There that option is. You can type what into there. And it'll only start show you up questions that start with the word what. And you could also come in here and change the title for your admin page, but you have to do something a little bit more complicated now. You're going to want to open up your settings page and make a couple changes inside of here where we have templates. Specifically, you're going to want to replace what's here where we have directories. You're going to want to type in OS path, join, and then inside of here, base, directory, and then point at templates. And we're going to create that in a second here. And that's going to tell Django to look in our templates directory. So of course, that means we have to create a templates directory. So you're going to want to create this file right here, this directory right here called templates, and then create another directory underneath of it called admin. And then to actually change the base template for your application, for the admin part anyway, you have to do a couple little crazy things. Open up your terminal and of course shut down the server. And you need to find a file that is called base underscore site dot html. That is the template we're going to be using here to edit the template for the admin page. And to find out where that is located, you're either going to type in Python 3 or Python dash C import. Django, 
print Django dot two underscores path two underscores close that off and then I have a quote and that's going to tell you exactly where it is located on your system so then you're going to want to open up that file and here is that file on my system you can see it's exactly the same it's going to be different depending upon you know whatever you got here so you're going to want to look for that directory you have here and then specifically django contrib admin templates admin base site.html so you have to hunt around a little bit and you're going to want to copy that guy so select everything and copy it then inside of the admin directory you just created a little bit ago going to right click new and file and then inside of here we're going to type in the exact same name as that file we just opened up so base site.html save that inside here you're going to paste in all of that code that you just copied and there that is and then instead of having Django administration inside of here let's say that we want to have polls administration inside of there instead it's actually very easy to change just going to come in right here and select everything down to the closing of the tag delete it and then type in polls admin administration right like that of course you have to restart your server run it come over here reload it and now it says polls administration so there you go guys that is how we can change a whole bunch of other additional things and how to work with static directories how to change our admin page how to do a whole bunch of different things and I completely covered the entire Django built-in tutorial from their site I'm planning on making some additional Django videos of course that are going to get more into the specifics of how to do a whole bunch of other different things hopefully my voice wasn't too much of a mess and like always please leave your questions and comments below otherwise till next time